Greetings, students. In this video, we will cover questions number 58 to 62 on the most recent SHSAT Form A exam. Let's go ahead and get started. For question number 58, Ms. Lee opened a retirement account with a deposit of $2,500. That is the principal or initial amount. This account earns 4% simple interest annually. How many years will it take her to earn $500 on her $2,500 deposit? The simple interest formula is written over here to the right. Simple interest means the principal or the initial amount times the rate of interest. We're gonna turn that interest rate into a decimal times the time period. In this case, the number of years. So we have I equals P times R times T. Let's fill in the information that the problem gives us. Remember, it's always important to annotate the problem. So we have an initial amount of 2,500. We have the interest rate of 4%. And we also have the final simple interest amount of $500. What we're looking for here is time. After plugging in our values, we will have 500 equals 2,500 times 0 0.04 times T. I personally prefer to treat the percent as a fraction because it's a lot easier for me to simplify. So I'll show you guys that strategy. We have 500 equals 2,500 times four over 100, which is basically 4% times T. I noticed that the denominator here has a factor of 100 and 2,500 also has a factor of 100. The shortcut way to think about this is if there's a zero in the denominator and a zero in the numerator, you can cancel them out. But guess what? There's two zeros. So both zeros are gonna cancel out with one another, which basically means you're dividing both 100 and 2,500 by 100. So 100 divided by 100 is one, and 2,500 divided by 100 is 25. So that's what we're left with. So now we can simplify our equation. We have 500 equals 100t. I got 100 because I went ahead and multiplied 25 times four. This is a simple one-step equation at this point. So all we need to do is to divide both sides by 100. When the 100s cancel out, right, 100 divided by 100 is 1, we're left with t equals 5, right, because 500 divided by 100 is 5. So our final answer is t equals 5. Now let's go ahead and fill in the answer to the problem on the actual grid. Because our answer is 5, we're going to start right here in the white box. We're gonna write the number five here. We're also going to bubble in the number five down here. Let's head over to question 59. For question 59, we are going to use the rules for order of operations. Let's take a look. It says, what is the value of the expressions shown above? I like to use an acronym called GEMS. The G stands for grouping symbols. Your grouping symbols are parentheses, brackets, braces, and even absolute value. The E stands for exponents and radicals. The M stands for multiplication and division from left to right. And the S stands for subtraction and addition from left to right. So let's start off with our grouping symbols. We take a look and we do see that there is an absolute value of negative three. We also have this negative two here in the parentheses. But for this case, it's actually an exponent. Let's simplify what we have so far. So we have six minus nine divided by positive three because the absolute value of negative three is three. Remember, absolute value just means the distance from zero. So the number negative three is three units from zero. So we change it to a positive three. Then we have plus negative two to the third power. So now we're getting into the exponents. Negative two to the third power is simply negative two times negative two times negative two. Negative two times negative two is positive four, and positive four times negative two is negative eight. So we're adding negative eight here. Then we're gonna multiply by one and a half. We're actually gonna change this one and a half into an improper fraction here in a second. 
So we've tackled our grouping symbols, which was just the absolute value. We've tackled the exponent, negative two to the third power is negative eight. And now we're going to apply any multiplication and division from left to right. So we're gonna skip over the subtraction because that does not come first. We're gonna work on the division right here. So negative nine divided by three is negative three. So we now have six minus three. Then we're going to add, right? And we have this negative eight times one and a half. So let's show our work over here to the left. Negative eight times one and a half, right? Is going to be the same thing as negative eight times three over two. Remember, to turn a mixed number into an improper fraction, we multiply two times one, and then we add the numerator. So two times one is two, plus one is three. That becomes our new numerator, and we keep the same denominator. So let's cancel out what we can. Two divided by two is one, negative eight divided by two is negative four. So now we have negative four times three, is negative 12. Let's add that to our problem over here. We have six minus three plus negative 12. Now we're gonna perform subtraction and addition from left to right. So we go ahead and we subtract six minus three, we get three, and now we're adding negative 12. So three plus negative 12 is negative nine. Now that we have a negative answer for our problem, we're actually gonna get started in the gray box over here. So we're gonna write our negative, we're gonna write our nine in the white box, we're gonna bubble in the negative right here, and we're going to bubble in the nine down here. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them down below, and I'll be happy to create additional videos to help clarify your concerns. Let's head over to question 60. For question 60, we are solving an equation for the variable x. The first step is always to perform the distributive property. If I see a number right on the outside and several terms in the parentheses, I'm going to distribute the number that's right on the outside. So let's give this a try. We'll bring down seven X plus three and we're distributing negative two. So negative two times two X is negative four X and negative two times one is negative two. We're gonna set that equal to 13. Our next step is to combine like terms. So let's see which terms have the same structure. So 7x is a like term with negative 4x, and 3 is a like term with negative 2. Let's combine. We have 7x minus 4x is 3x, and we have 3 minus 2 is 1. We only have two more steps to isolate the variable. At this point, we're gonna perform the inverse operation. Right now we're adding one, so the opposite of that is going to be to subtract one on both sides of the equal sign right here. So one minus one cancels out, and we have three X equals 13 minus one is 12. Our final step is to undo this multiplication bond. If X is being multiplied by three, the opposite or inverse of that is to divide by three. So we will divide both sides of this equation by three. Our final answer here is four. Because this is a positive number, we're gonna get started right here by writing four in the white box and we'll bubble in the number four right here. Let's try out number 61. For 61, this problem is testing your understanding of angle relationships. There are a few things I would like you to know before solving this problem. As I'm reading the question, it says in the figure above, line L is perpendicular to line N. What is the value of X? So it's very important that you understand what the word perpendicular means. So I have a couple notes here for you. Perpendicular means the angle measures 90 degrees. So we know that this number right here is going to be 90 for that angle. We also know the triangle sum theorem is that the sum of the angles in a triangle is always equal to 180 degrees. The final piece of information you need to know for this problem is that vertical angles are congruent. Let's do a quick review of vertical angles. Anytime two lines intersect, you have opposite angles being congruent. So let's say this angle over here is 35 degrees 
then the angle opposite is also 35 degrees. We call these angles vertical angles. You should also note that any straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So if this angle over here is 35 degrees, this angle over here is going to be 145 degrees because 35 plus 145 equals 180. But guess what? We have another vertical angle relationship. Once we've determined that the angle up here is 145, we know for certain that the angle down here will also be 145. Let's use this information to solve this problem. The angle down here is given as 35 degrees and we notice that line L is intersecting line M. Therefore, a pair of vertical angles are forming. So if this angle here is 35, we know that this angle right here is also 35. We also know that line M and N are intersecting lines. So if this angle is going to be labeled X, we know that the angle here on the inside is also going to be labeled X. The final step to solve our problem is to find the missing value X. So we can see that 90 plus X plus 35 equals 180. Let's solve. So we have our equation. So we will combine like terms to solve for the variable x. We have 90 and 35 as like terms. So 90 plus 35 is 125 plus x equals 180. In order to get x by itself, we need to perform the inverse operation of 125. The opposite of positive 125 is to subtract 125. So x equals 55 degrees. Since this answer is a positive number, we will get started right here in the white box and we will write the number 55 and then we will bubble in 55 right here at the bottom. We want both fives to be bubbled in. Please remember to leave these two columns blank. Let's try out 62. This question is testing your understanding of mean or average word problems. Keep in mind when solving mean or average word problems, you always wanna find the sum first. That is a little hint that comes up in handy when you're taking the SHSAT. Let's read question number 62. The mean value of eight numbers is 17. Three of these numbers, nine, 11, and 20 are discarded. That means we're gonna get rid of those numbers. What is the mean of the remaining five numbers? Let's go ahead and set up our equation. We know that when finding the average, we're typically gonna find the sum of eight numbers, divide by eight to get 17. The opposite of dividing by eight is to go ahead and multiply both sides of this equation by eight. So we know that the sum of those eight numbers is 136. Three of these numbers is nine, 11, and 20. So nine plus 11 plus 20 is equal to 40. So if the total sum is 136, we know that the sum of the three numbers plus the sum of the remaining five numbers must give us 136. I will replace the sum of these three numbers right here with 40. So 40 plus the sum of five numbers is 136. So naturally we have that the sum of five numbers is 96. The question asks us to find the mean of the remaining five numbers. Remember, to find the average of something, you're going to take the sum, which is 96 here, and then divide by the number of numbers. So since we have five numbers, we have 96 divided by five. That's going to give us, you know, five into nine goes one time, remainder four. Five into 46 goes nine times, remainder one. I like to put a one right next to an additional zero. 10 divided by five is two. So the final answer here is 19.2. Because this number is positive, we're gonna skip over the gray box and we're gonna start in the white box. So we have 19.2, which means I'm gonna fill in the number one. I'm going to fill in the number nine. This time we have a decimal. So you're gonna go ahead and fill in the decimal point. And finally, we're filling in the number two. This completes the grid in questions for the 2024 SHSAT Form A practice exam. Please join us in the next video to get started with the multiple choice. If you learned something from this video, please go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I look forward to creating more content to help you master the concepts on the SHSAT. See you in the next video.